Hi, I'm Ernie Kleiman. Guten Tag, bonjour, and hello to everyone out in ukulele land. This is a piece of sycamore which we'll use to make a Hawaiian tenor ukulele neck. It's approximately 16 inches long or 400 millimeters long and 85 millimeters wide or roughly three and a half inches wide by 20 millimeters thick or three quarters of an inch. In this particular segment I've joined the two pieces, short pieces of sycamore together to make a stronger joint. Typically when you join two pieces of wood together the glue line should be stronger than the wood itself and the wood will probably break before the glue line does. That's how strong modern day glues are. In this sample here I've just used traditional white glue which you can purchase at any home center or, or hardware store that you have available locally. The purpose of the ukulele neck is to hold the strings and to create a bridge which creates tension across the top of the body itself. For this segment I've used sycamore but you can equally use maple but I'd make the neck much thinner. You can use koa, you can use mahogany, any medium dense hardwood will work. There's no ukulele a bible that says it must be written in, that says you have to use this kind of wood or such and such a wood in order to make a nice neck that will work for you. Another consideration is how many strings. You can get away with a lighter wood if you're making a four string, but if you're making an, a six or eight string, I'd, rem I'd remind you to leave your, the bottom or the underside of the neck a little thicker to accommodate for the extra tension and pull on the top strings. And also keep in mind you want to use a fairly stiff fingerboard or fretboard made from some super hard wood like ebony or rosewood to add a little bit of stability to the neck and the fingerboard. Now another design consideration is the angle of cut on this neck over here. We will use about a 15 degree angle combined with a jig to cut, to cut it on the bandsaw. Now if you're going to make a slotted headstock, I'd recommend using a 10 degree angle because the tuning machines will be going through a hole and the breakover angle has to be different between the nut and the head and the strings to accommodate the slotted headstock. 15 degree angle is also used on steel string guitars. Now, in this jig, it's a very simple jig, basically, which I use with my band saw. I've got a runner here, which is a piece of oak screwed into a piece of MDF and a 15 degree angle 2x4 block buttressed with a piece of pine. So basically the slot goes down the center, the wood is butted up against the angled jig, and then basically you run the, this piece of oak through the slot, and it goes through and cuts the angle and decapitates the head at a 15 degree angle very, very smoothly. Now, if you don't have a band saw, you're probably asking me, how am I going to cut that angle? Well, no problem. There's several ways to do it. One of them is to put your wood in a vise and use an old-fashioned back saw. This uh, T-Zac I purchased 30 years ago, I've recut the teeth. Typically the back saw teeth are small little teeth, but I'll cut them on a rip cut so I can rip with any angle. Another popular tool, tool in Europe less so in North America, is the Danish bow saw. And the beauty of this saw is that once you get in the, in the cut, it cuts very, very quickly. So this is a very useful tool uh, that you can pick up from specialty uh, tool suppliers in the United States, Germany, Europe, and any place overseas. It is very handy. I, I really like this uh, saw, this bow saw. It's a 16-inch Danish bow saw. If you're very handy, you can just buy the blade and make the arms and all the other parts yourself. It's teak and pine. You just lay out your angle over here. Your 15 degree angle is laid out 
on your neck stock and then you put it in your vise and start cutting away. Like over here, put it in this little vise over here and just start cutting away at a 15 degree angle. In the next segment, we'll be discussing how to flip over that 15 degree angle, put it in a little jig, clamping jig, and align it up together. Make sure everything is rigid when you're gluing it together because it's very easy to make mistakes here. Now, one of the things a lot of people get hung up on is what kind of wood to use for a neck. As I mentioned earlier, you do not have to use sycamore. You can also use a one piece or whatever shop scraps you have. And if there's one thing I can tell you, it's what my shop teacher always told me back 30 plus years ago, 35 years ago, always practice on scrap. Don't, if this is your first neck, I don't suggest you use a nice piece of wood. I suggest you find a piece of 2x4 or pine or spruce and practice making your cuts on scrap pieces of wood first before you get to the final product. So as I mentioned earlier, you can use mahogany, you can use koa, you can use sycamore, you can even use hard maple if you wish, or locust, or even oak, red oak if you have it. But keep in mind, the harder the wood, the thinner you want that neck to be to accommodate for the thickness of the wood. Another thing to keep in mind is that you want the neck to shape the neck to suit your hand. Now there's three ways of making the underside. You can use it as a round shaped U, a C shape, or a D shape, or a V shape like on a steel string. Again, things are not cast in stone. Now for this demo, we'll be taking up the jig, lining up the corner over here to decapitate the head, clamp it together with an F clamp, and very carefully run this through the saw until we get a nice 15, de 15 degree angle cut. I want to make sure everything is facing down. I'll turn the bandsaw on. I'm not showing it for this sh show, but please wear ear protection and eye protection. Anything that is uh, done on the power tool could be potentially dangerous. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to be doing it freehand. And here we have the two pieces of the ukulele neck. And what we'll be doing is sanding them back. So basically we have an angle, a scarf joint over here, which makes the neck much, much stronger. So I suggest plane, plane the flat side of this with your block plane, plane the face, then join the two of them together later on. In the next segment, we'll be showing how to glue the ukulele scarf joint together. Thank you.